All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. Pastor Dow here. Listen, I want to make a video. It's going to be a stinking video right here because you're going to have to deny people in order to survive for yourself because you chose to exercise wisdom. And you chose to implement a plan. And you chose to become a person of action. Listen to me very closely. We all see the present climate and it's not looking good. And we all see the spiritual and mental state of America and the health of it is very sick. We all see that. We're watching everything that the Joe Biden and the Democrats administration touch just literally go to pot. And they don't give a damn. They don't care about us one bit whatsoever at all. But listen, some of you have been listening to me for a long, long time. And some of you have been prepping. Some of you have food stores. Some of you have made the choice and decision, hard choice and decision long, long time ago to uproot yourself and your family and move to a safer environment, move to a state uh, to where you can actually exercise freedom and liberty. Don't have to worry about looking over your shoulders. Don't have to worry about uh, going into a store. If somebody's going to open up gunfire or uh, you don't have to worry about getting jacked or car jacked. And I, way out in the country, you don't. But you made those hard choices and decisions because you heard me giving direction on certain things, which actually, I'm going to tell you right now, everything, usually the majority of things that I talk about, it comes specifically from the word of God. It does. And what I do is I put it in a, a format easy for people to understand. And then if you feel conviction and you feel compelled to move, that's only because you're hearing the word that is never spoken in your churches, your assemblies, your temples, or wherever you, you uh, choose to go to fellowship or worship. It's just, it's just all there's to it. But I want to tell you a hard truth here today, a real hard truth. Listen, myself personally, I think it's the heightened sense of selfishness. When people have the opportunity to prepare and when people have an opportunity to get up there, do nothing and implement a plan and prepare themselves, especially when you see things going from bad to worse, I think it's the heightened sense of selfishness to sit up there and, and for them to have it in their plan that if things do go awry, if the proverbial crap hit the fan, their plan is, is that they'll come over to you who has done did the painstaking task of sacrifice and suffering in order to get you and your family in a position to where if the economy collapses, if the system collapses, you still have food, you have shelter, um, you can still survive, even if there's no jobs, even if the whole thing go, even if war hits this country and stuff and everything really shuts down and we get attacked you will still be able to survive and protect you and your family for some length of time. And some of you have taken it even farther and taken my advice by becoming mutually assistant with people who you know that is of the same frame of mindset as you are and as prepared like you are. You've got to understand that when you have tried your best to speak to natural family members, to friends, to colleagues, associates, whoever it is, they look at you like you're crazy, like you're some type of crackpot, fanatic, or coup. What is wrong with you when you tell them, listen, things are going, they're going bad. We better prepare. We better start storing up food. We better start thinking about self-preservation. Things are not always going to run the way that they've always been. When you start talking like that, fear grips their heart. And then they come back with a rebuttal to protect themselves, insulate themselves so they can stay in the same condition and same mindset that they're in now. That wasn't you. So you ought to give yourself a pat on the back for being able to prepare you and your family. Because listen to me, those same people, if you stay in contact with them, as rebellious, as stubborn, as stiff-necked, as stout as they were, when they did not have faith to exercise any action and put any action to what you said, but they despised and they rejected you, they're going to be hunting for you. You know, just like over at the southern border, where we got all these refugees, trekking thousands of miles in order to get into the United States of America, don't you put the same thing past your natural family, your friends, your business, and your colleagues. I'm telling you, they will do the exact same thing. If they know where you are and they know that you have stored up food and they know that you have a homestead and you've been able to build a little nest egg in order to protect yourself from the economic collapse, the Great Depression, or whatever you want to call it, they will trek or drive as much as they can. They will they will fill up that tank, drive until the gas go out of it, and then they will walk to your place. 
And they will get there because they'll be self-determined because they know that you will be their lifeline and their bloodline. But listen, the fact is you don't have enough food storage for them and you and your family. See, when somebody refuses to prepare because they want to be obstinate, they want to be vindictive, they want to be arrogant and proud and egotistical, they want to reject and laugh and mock and scorn to ride and chide and ridicule you and call you all kind of names, especially when they're out of your presence. It's all funny to it, but it ain't funny when that belly start hitting that spine. First thought is going to come up into their mind. Hey, such and such so-and-so, they got a homestead and a cabin out in the woods and they've been preparing and stuff uh, and all kinds of stuff. Man, we can go out there and, and, and we can join up with them. Mind you, they bought nothing to the table. Nothing to the table at all. Now you see the reason why I call it a heightened sense of selfishness because they want to come and put their feet under your table and bring a lot of people with them. And if they couldn't prepare then, when it was easy, you think that when they get to your place, that they're going to actually do what you tell them to do in order to sustain your homestead or your livelihood? No, they ain't. If they was rebellious and stubborn and stiff, the only thing they're thinking about is saving their own hide, and they don't care. They don't care what you have done. And whatever it takes, by any means necessary for them in order to preserve and save their own hide, that'll be their only motivation. Not because they give a damn. And not because they even have one thought about the benevolent spirit that you had. No. When they get out there, they will destroy everything. They will rebel. They will call discord. There will be insurrection. There will be all kinds of stuff going on. And if you're in a world without rule of law, you got some tough choices and some extremely hard decisions to make if you allow that to happen. So I'm making this video right now so we can get ahead, so you can get ahead of the curve because I'm telling you, somebody is going to want to, somebody's going to want to take all of your hard earned prepping. Somebody's going to want to take all your hard earned work, the skill that you'll put in, your food storage. They're going to not only want to come, they're going to want to come and take over. It's so sad. So, if you have a homestead and you have people that is of the like mind, same mind, and now you, we don't, you know, they want to be mutually assistant and y'all speaking between yourself, y'all have a contingency plan in case things do go around where y'all can actually meet up and preserve each other. Y'all have a common storage area. You don't want to talk to too many people. You don't want to give up your position to too many people at all because I'm telling you, them people are coming. I ain't got to worry about my homestead. I ain't got to worry about my community. Because I burned bridges so hard or I had people or people put it like this. They were so upset at me that they made sure that they burned bridges so hard that there's no way they could cross and get back even if they wanted to. And that's good. That's a good severing right there because what that does, that preserves me and the people that's associated around with, with me and with me and mutually assisted with me and we can continue to keep on with life. Because if you think for one minute that those people, if you choose to be benevolent, it's going to come out there and do what you tell them, go out there and chop their wood. Go out there and hold that garden. Yep, go out, and go, out, go out there and clean up that yard. Go out there and, and uh, butcher that chicken. Go out there and get that uh, chicken coop clean or something like that. You think they're going to obey? Oh, man, as the old saying go, you're going to have hell to pay. And see, most people don't know this about human nature. See, when people have an entitlement mentality, they expect handouts because they've been receiving handouts all their life and they've had to produce nothing. They've had to do nothing at all. And you're you know, just like the government, uh, just another means and you're just another provision for their wants. Not their needs, their wants. And so they're not going to have any respect for you whatsoever at all, nor your hard work, nor your prepping, nor your labor, anything. You had better listen to me and listen to me real good. If you've already done trying to talk to people after the second and third time, they don't hear, you quietly smile, keep doing what you're doing, and do not give them any information whatsoever at all about your whereabouts, where you're living, where you're going, because you don't want those type of cancerous, diseased, sick-minded people around you. There's an old statement in the book that says one sinner destroys much good. And I'm telling you, it ain't going to take too many of them to destroy much good. I promise you that. You don't want nothing at all to do 
with these type, these types of people. Nothing, believe me. You get a chance, like, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Make sure you hit the like button. You want to hear more, come over to my Patreon channel. Um, everything be in the description below. Pass this video around. Give it to somebody because you know what? What I just got finished saying, it's been said before, but given the conditions and the timing where we're at right now, this is something that needs to be echoed in the ears of every single responsible person over and over and over again until they get it. It probably needs to be listened to at least twice a week. Because you have to, if you don't listen to it and you don't stay on the cutting edge, you know how we do as Americans, we like letting things slip and letting things go back to the way they were. We like letting stories die down and we so quick to forget what has happened. Well, I don't forget. I think it's one of my strengths. Hope it says something to stimulate thought. I want y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Prepare.